So we're so excited today because uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the third episode of the PC Pep TV channel. And today we're talking about Silibon. Today yes. we're talking about the science behind exercise, yes. both aerobic and strength exercise. Mm. So we're very excited to talk to you about that, the habit formation, but also the implications and the cognitive level, the way we think, uh, but also in terms of how it makes us feel. Yeah. So, so excited about today's topic. Agreed. And again, I was saying that Gabriel and I are presenting at a big conference um, this Friday morning. And so I've been looking at the literature recently. And I also heard, because I'm drawing on the kind of the science, uh, the science, the, the name of the book is The Joy of Movement by Kelly McGonigal, who's a Stanford uh, psychologist, and like, really drawing on the best of science. And she is saying that the muscles are releasing chemicals that can actually fight off cancer cells. Um, and I was like, what? How, how does that work? You know, that, that type of situation? Um, but it's actually true. So our muscles are like um, what she called like polypharmacy. There's a whole bunch of chemicals that are within our muscles. And if we don't use our muscles, those chemicals do not get released into our bodies. And they're actually called myokines. They're like hormone therapy. And those, those hormones have a whole number of influences in terms of actually fighting prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I actually looked at was the reviews of if you exercise after a prostate cancer diagnosis, it actually looks like it reduced your chance of dying of prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So the, the data is there overall, and there's a whole bunch of possible explanations around that. And I don't think I'm gonna review all the particular science of how that might happen, just to say that it can happen. Mm -hmm. so. And what I want to say is that there are quite a few meta-analyses that have been published in the past three to four years talking about the benefits of exercise, both aerobic but also strength exercise, including exercises like Tai Chi. And for those of you that don't know what Tai Chi is, Tai Chi is a movement. It's a very slow movement of the body. Do you want to show them? Or is yeah. it like, it's that yeah, type yeah, of yeah. Yeah, thing? Yeah. Anyways. I'm, just gonna go, like I'm also going to just turn off the water in the background here. Sorry. Okay, please do that. In the meantime, I'll talk about Tai Chi a little bit. So what the evidence shows that forms of exercise such as Tai Chi or Qigong help us with balance yes. and engaging in those type of exercise when we're 50 and above, it's really beneficial for us in terms of balance as we age, which we know could be an issue. But also the meta-analysis are really stressing out the fact that when we engage in relatively intense, medium to intense form of exercise, about 30 minutes a day, if possible, every day, for seven days of the week, that indeed it does help with our cognitive function and it also helps with our mood, particularly if, relatively speaking, we're in, in a good mood. Because, you know, exercise could also amplify other forms of moods that we, we hold at that time. Mm. Yeah. It just reminds me that I was, I was out in the park Right now, before this podcast, mm -hmm. and gentlemen, it sounds a little bit weird, but I actually, I skip as instead of running, which is like too jarring on my joints and power walking isn't quite intense enough. So I actually skip in the park. So I was skipping in the park, looking at the sky and mm -hmm. like my, it's almost like I'm doing like a gratitude prayer as I'm looking up at the sky and the stars like, oh, it's so good to be outside and exercising and so on. So Anyway, so that's probably why I'm in a silly mood, is I got the kind of persistence high off of all this. So. I did not exercise today, and I feel terrible. I've been working too hard, so I'm actually planning to do something as soon as we're done yes. uh, today's Sweet. session. And I love when I walk, actually, or I sprint walk, yes. and you skip beside me. That That's also nice. It, it kind of adjusts to, to my level of uh, Well, one of the things activity. that we know is that you get more benefits from exercise in terms of a mm. psychological, a neurochemical perspective, if you do an exercise with other people. Yes. So for instance, power walking, they say one of these called like collective joy, and it just kind of brings out the best in you and you get more motivation, you get more kind of um, better emotional uh, connection and better neurological processing because of being together with other people while you exercise. Killing two birds with one stone. Yeah. 
Exactly. Okay, so Jen, I, I also want to just um, tell you about a couple of things. So there's a couple of cutoff points. The first mm -hmm. thing is the feel better effect. So only three minutes of exercise, like getting out of your chair and kind of putting on a little dance tune, like YouTube, and like dancing around and just doing something, or a little yoga, a little stretching, a little power walk. Mm -hmm. Even three minutes of exercise actually prime the body to feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, and what they say is, as your heart rate goes up, you actually release adrenaline, which is, you think of that as the stress hormone, but actually it gives you energy. Um, when you contract those muscles, I'm talking about as soon as you start contracting the muscles, you're releasing the molecules of joy is what the, one of the expressions that they come up in the last few years that increases the dopamine levels within your brain. And so you're actually feeling better. It increases your mood, your motivation, and a sense of hope and confidence. Mm -hmm. And lastly, sorry, one more. Then when, you, when you're breathing deeply, you actually also release by itself a sense of confidence and joy. That's wonderful. You know what other, other benefit to exercise is there? That when we're talking about depression and negative mood um, in our previous episode, and how the problem is when we engage in negative affect and we kind of stay there, remember? Instead of it I'm being off, it comes and it goes, it comes and it goes. What exercise can do is when we engage and we remain engaged at a high level of stress, if we start exercising in that moment, that will act as a cue for us to disengage. Yeah. So in, in a way, it will force us out of a very bad habit that we know yeah. it has negative implications as far as our health yeah. is concerned. Yeah, she's talking about the anti-anxiety effect. Mm -hmm. So you're actually releasing endocannabinoids, which sound a lot like cannabis because it's actually true. It's like a similar chemical in your brain that like, automatically gives you a little bit of a mellowing effect, mm -hmm. even with a three minute there. Okay, so then the next one, so to amplify that, the feel better effect, so you're feeling lousy, you're like, you're kind of in a down space. You get up and do three minutes of exercise. To amplify the effect, add music to it. Mm, so, I love that. Yeah. I love that. So you get more, more adrenaline, more dopamine, more enthusiasm, more joy. Well, you know, there's also research to show that when we play music that is familiar to us, mm. you know, music from when we were young that we really enjoy dancing on, that's, that's a wonderful facilitator to improving a negative mood. So if we feel down, for example, and we really don't know what to do to snap out of it, well, a good way to do that is to play some music that you're familiar with and that you enjoy mm. dancing or listening to. From, from your really kid. Yeah. So the next, so the first cutoff is the three minute point. So everybody can do three minutes. We're talking about healthy habits and you know, doing something easy for three minutes. The next cutoff point is actually 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you can exercise moderately intensely for 20 minutes, you get something called the persistence high, meaning the chemistry in your brain actually persists beyond the time of the, the time of the exercise. And so that's when you really get the kind of endorphins and endocannabinoids and so on. And it has a residual effect on your mood, making you kind of happier, more pleasant, more hopeful, greater courage. Um, and just, from an evolutionary perspective, it makes sense that you would have that. It makes you more pro-social. I think that's mm -hmm. really part of it. And the last thing I want to have you think about is when you're exercising, it can also be a symbol for your life, right? So when you're doing strength training, you can say, I'm strong, I'm effective. You're sending that message to yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're walking down a path, you're saying to yourself, I'm on the path of life. I'm taking one step after another. So. By doing the kind of um, the symbolism around it, you actually increase the kind of psychological benefits of exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's it in terms of the, the five to seven minute overview, but I wanted to give, give you that three minutes to boost your mood just on the spot. Yeah. 20 minutes of intense exercise to get a persistent high will drive the pro-social behavior and really help your mental health. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Thank you.